all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so the discussion today is how vitamin d helps a cell that is preparing to die a fiery death and cause inflammation and not to do that and move away from it to either do autophagy and heal or do apoptosis and die more gracefully without causing inflammatory uh, results so let's look at this this is the um, this is drbean.com in the description of this video there is a 499 per month link that gives you access to another 800 amazing lectures and an important thing is that this today's talk that i'm doing right now is actually part of the inflammatory system series of talks where we are discussing various inflammatory pathways and how to modulate them and how do those pathways work i think that is an essential for everyone so um, if you would like uh, get access to dr bean at just 499 and then you can receive those zoom call links as well this is the this is one of the studies or articles autophagy pyroptosis ferroptosis new regulatory mechanism for atherosclerosis then there are some more vitamin d related studies and some more pyroptosis studies some apoptosis studies and some morphological features as well so let's start with our discussion so when our cells are under stress so let's go down here for a second so imagine that these are cells that are inflamed and I'm going to try to um, bring my camera up here as well. So here is my camera too. So when our cells are inflamed, so let's say these are the cells. There are many ways, there are many reasons for the inflammation. For example, tall like receptors that look at various pathogens in the environment would trigger inflammation. Tall like receptors in turn can activate NLRP3 mechanisms and that would further uh, go downstream and cause pyroptosis so what happens is the following so let's look at this cell from right side here so imagine that this cell has a tall like receptor activated that means the cell has observed a pathogen that is attacking us it has entered this path pathogen has entered our body when the tall like receptor becomes activated what it does is it of course causes various genes within the cell to become activated to start producing the defense mechanism one one process for the defense mechanism is to produce another set of uh, receptors or upregulate another system which is called nlrp3 system that is also an inflammasome system that also is a pyroptotic system nlrp3 system is a more sensitive system and what it does is this system once primed primed is when tlr activates it once that system is primed and is now become sensitive and is observing things in the environment this nlrp system can observe the pathogen associated molecular patterns and that is you know the patterns that are present on the bacteria and fungi and viruses etc and this system nlrp can also uh, sense the cell damage patterns as well or damage associated molecular pattern for example presence of atp outside in the environment in the tissue fluids atp should not be there atp should be inside the cell it is the energy or presence of cyto mitochondrial pieces or presence of mitochondrial reactive oxygen species or presence of uric acid crystals or presence of cholesterol crystals or presence of peroxidized lipids so there are many damage associated protein or or molecular patterns that can be assessed by nlrp3 once the nlrp3 becomes activated because it has sensed some of these uh, products then what it does is it starts through the nuclear factor kappa b system it starts a set of series of activities within the cell which are called pyroptotic platform activation in that process what it does is in a higher level what it does the cell does is that it starts making 
proteins or activating proteins called caspases. Caspase proteins will then cause interleukin 1 beta to become activated, interleukin 18 to become activated, and there are even some other proteins called gas dermins to become activated. So what happens is that when those proteins become activated, think of this cell now as a bomb. It has inflammatory molecules that it has cooked up inside of it. And I'm going to go to that cell here. So this cell has, a, has cooked up interleukin 1 beta and interleukin 18 and even interleukin 33 and they are all present inside the cell. And then what this cell does is that within the cell, it activates a set of proteins called gas dermins. Gas dermins are actually proteins that would combine with each other. We, we call it polymerize and they would combine with each other to form a pore-like structure. This pore-like structure from within the cell will get inserted into the cell membrane. So here, if you see, this is a This is a gas dermin. This is a gas dermin. Where did it come from, this little pipe or pore-like structure? It was thrust into the cell membrane from within the cell. Now what happens is that when this gas dermin is, a pore is formed in the cell membrane, of course you can now understand that there will be water that would start coming in and the intracellular environment will become disrupted. There would be things that, that are within the cell that would start leaking out, for example, interleukin 1 beta and interleukin 18 which would come out and cause a lot of inflammation in the surrounding tissue, would also cause immune cells to come over and cause a lot of uh, inflammation. So this cell, this cell that has died, has created a wave of inflammation as well, like a nuclear bomb goes off. And that would cause other cells to become primed for the inflammation. And they would start doing the same thing. And that is how the inflammation can one, become protective and take care of whatever is the offending agent or two, can become destructive and kill or, or become toxic to the innocent bystander issues. So this is called pyroptosis, fiery death of a cell. Of course, we would like that when not necessary, for example, in subclinical inflammation or chronic inflammation or atherosclerosis or rheumatoid arthritis, when it is not necessary to have this kind of a cellular death, then we hope that that doesn't happen. So there are two possibilities now. We, there is one possibility that the cell actually, instead of dying at all, it would do autophagy takes care of whatever are the offending agents inside of it and kind of heal. Although sometimes autophagy fails as well. But we would suspect that hopefully the cell would have successful autophagy and heal itself. You know that autophagy can be triggered by intermittent fasting, it can be triggered by coffee, it can be triggered by resveratrol and there are many other ways that autophagy can be triggered and uh, can be useful. Now, if the cell cannot perform autophagy and cannot heal itself, it has to die because the stressors on the cell are still present and they are causing issues, then we would suspect and we would expect the cell to not die through the fiery death. Instead, maybe if it has to die, then die through apoptosis. What is apoptosis? So if you see here, this is a cell that is preparing for apoptosis. Apoptosis is a cell death as well, but is non-inflammatory cell death. It is a physiological cell death. In this process, what the cell does is it also activates some caspases here. There were caspases 1 and 4 and 11 activated in pyroptotic pathways as well. Here there are some caspases proteins activated. Caspases are the proteins that would degrade and dismantle other proteins. So caspases would become activated. They would start degrading the, the molecular organelle which within the cell. For example, they would start breaking down the mitochondria. They would start breaking down all Golgi operatuses, endoplasmic reticulums, DNAs, RNAs. They would start breaking them down. Some of those fragments will actually be packaged up into neat little bundles so that even if they come out, they are not kind of um, sensed as damage 
molecules damage associated molecules plus these neat little bundles are autophagosomes and within that we can try to degrade these so this is a graceful dismantling of the cell similarly the cells have lysosomes present in them which are you can think of them as the acids within the cell or the stomach of the cell those lysosomes are opened up their cell membranes or the, the lysosomal membranes are destabilized which open these lysosomes and all the acids come out in the cell and these acid would start kind of digesting and degrading all the proteins that are in the process of getting degraded. In the same time, at the same time, the cell would start developing little blebs on the, on the membrane, so membrane swellings would appear. We do not really know how the blebs appear or what really happens or what is their significance. The thought is that the cell cytoskeleton, that within the cell there are skeleton of the cell, that skeleton starts failing and cannot keep the integrity of the cell membrane and so the cell membrane starts swelling. And the other important thing is that there is a protein called phosphatidyl serine that is attached on the cell membrane and usually is present on the inner side of the cell membrane the cell when it is going through the process of apoptosis everts that puts that outward so it is kind of a flag that comes out on the cell when the phosphatidyl serine is now on the outer side of the cell that is a signal to macrophages and other phagocytic cells to say hey guys clear me out eat me out and kill me so that is all a very uh, graceful process for a cell to eliminate itself. Why did it decide to eliminate itself? Because it may have some sort of a stressor that it cannot handle or it is not able to fix that stressor. For example, let's say the cell has a DNA damage and it tried to repair that damage and it could not, it decided to die. Or let's say that there are reactive oxygen species present in th inside the cell that cell just cannot get rid of. Or there's a virus that is just running rampant and the cell is afraid that if this virus caused any DNA damage that would then cause cancers, etc. So cell decided to just die. So once again, we would pre prefer the cell not to die by pyroptosis and not cause even more inflammation unless it is absolutely necessary. So I'm talking in the context of unnecessary subclinical chronic inflammation. So now with this knowledge of uh, this understanding that there can be autophagy that is a healing mechanism and there can be pyroptosis that is an inflammatory mechanism and there is apoptosis that is cell death but more graceful. Vitamin D. Vitamin D can block the pyroptotic pathways, NLRP3 pathway, inflammatory pathway of a cell and move the cell, transition the cell towards apoptotic pathway. And it is possible that when the cell goes apoptotic pathway, then cell might actually even have autophagy already started and that might become successful and the cell doesn't have to die with this fiery death and cause other cells to have inflammation and cause other immune cells to come over and cause inflammation as well. So vitamin D and let me just very quickly show you some of these studies. So here vitamin D and vitamin D receptor attenuate cisplatin induced AKI by down regulating NLRP3 caspase 1 gas termin pyroptotic pathway. What they're saying is that vitamin D receptor when they become activated they block the NLRP3 caused activated um, pyroptotic pathway which is amazing then here vitamin d receptor inhibits nlrp3 activation by impeding impeding its brcc3 mediated d ubiquitination then here pyroptosis mechanism and disease here effects of vitamin d3 supplementation and aerobic training on autophagy signaling protein and rat model etc then here apoptosis induced by vitamin d compound in breast Cancer cell is inhibited by BCL2 but does not involve known caspase or P53. And then some more. And there are tons of studies. These are just a few that I thought it would be interesting for you. So that is the discussion for today. Vitamin D is really important not only to reduce the inflammation but also to reduce the cell's fiery deaths. And please remember it is not necessary that you took vitamin D today and then you're good forever. Vitamin D keeps getting consumed by the inflammatory processes 
and by the cells which are doing physiological processes as well so that means we have to maintain our vitamin d levels and we should not just forget about this so with this thank you very much once again there's a link in the description of this video for 499 you can get access to dr bean 800 more lecture plus these inflammation related talks that i'm doing every tuesday 5 p.m pacific time on zoom and you can come live and have a discussion about these inflammatory pathways the way to modulate them and the way uh, the ways to he help yourself with that there is also there are links in the description that are for if you would like to support this work you can buy me a coffee or use paypal or substack or patreon so with this thank you very much have a nice weekend and i would speak to you next week